approval of one item in amicus brief that we have yes. agreed to sign on to. So she's going to explain that now. Yes. So normally in our consent agenda, we have fairly routine items um, that don't need discussion. We have approval of minutes, grants, uh, contracts that we've already seen on information um, that, that we, we've had advance notice of. We did have one item tonight that we did not have a chance to um, publicly announce and we wanted to share to make sure that everyone um, understands the reason. We were um, asked, invited to sign on to an amicus brief that's um, going before the Fourth Circuit Court and it was on a very tight timeline for us to respond. We needed to consult with our legal counsel, which we were able to do right before this, this meeting. So, um, and because we were voting unanimously, we did want to vote on the consent agenda. Um, but we did vote, the full board did vote to join the amicus brief along with other school boards and school officials from 31 states supporting the position of the student plaintiff in the Gavin, Gavin Grimm um, versus Gloucester County School Board case. We will be the only school board in the Commonwealth of Virginia to sign this brief. The case involves a request by a transgender student to use the high school bathroom consistent with the student's expressed gender identity and the claim that the school board's adoption of a policy prohibiting the student from doing so violates the student's rights under Title IX. Title IX is the law prohibiting sex discrimination in federally funded education programs. Uh, the brief um, uh, states, thousands of transgender students attend American schools every day, many of whom, such as respondent Gavin Grimm, have come forward to request from their schools the same support and respect for their gender identity that all other students receive as a matter of course. The signers of the brief's collective experiences refute the hypothetical concerns raised by the petitioner, Gloucester County School Board. Um, that school board uh, claimed that allowing all students to access sex-specific facilities and amenities that match their gender identity will lead to general disruption, that it will violate the privacy or comfort of other students, or will lead to the abolition of gender segregated facilities and activities for all students. The signers have addressed and in some cases personally grappled with many of the same fears and concerns in their own schools and districts. However, in our professional experience, none of those fears and concerns has materialized in the form of actual problems in the schools. Instead, inclusive policies not only fully support the reality of transgender student circumstances, but also foster a safer and more welcoming learning environment for all students. Thank you, Dr. Cannon. Alrighty, we will now move on to the citizen comment on non-agenda items. 